want to welcome you live here to Billy D. Hillier Stadium on the campus of Faulkner University in Montgomery, Alabama. Jeremy Smith alongside Joel Sellers at the moment as we talk a little pregame for you. FSN pregame. Joel, it is a Faulkner team that is coming in at one and two. They have in particular had some struggles on the offensive side of the ball. Three touchdowns over the last two games. As you've followed this game, you've been the beat writer for this team for FaulknerEagles.com. What have you seen and what are the trends that you've noticed for this Faulkner Eagle offense that they need to work on and try to find some change today? They need to establish the run, I believe. that. I mean, most offenses start that way because while it's a talented room, they've just not been able to have room to work with. Like, O-line needs to grow up fast. Yeah, and, and to that end, it's 2.3 yards per carry yeah. on the ground here for Faulkner this year. Uh, you don't have a 100-yard a rusher outside of John Bolton. Uh, Tim Cody is your next closest, netting just 57 yards mm -hmm. on the ground on 20 carries. And, uh, and as you've noted, there's not been a lot of room and not been a lot of time for this Faulkner ground game. The other side of that now is the quarterback battle that continues. Uh, you, you've had Raquan Beal throw 51 passes. Ben Anderson has thrown 31 passes. Uh, a couple of different, a couple of different things that we've seen uh, from these quarterbacks. What have you seen that's worked? What's worked seems to be having packages sometimes. Like you have Raquan start the game. And so far, he does that. And, of course, and Ben Anderson typically comes in as your change of pace guy. So they both, when, when the O-line is clicking, they have some strengths in similar areas. They can push the ball down the fields. But they also have, similar, are, have some things that are not so similar about them and that Ben can extend some more plays, it seems, while Raekwon's your big, big-armed dude and who can really stand tall in the pocket. Yeah, one of the things that, that I think you look at in the passing game is where they're finding the hits. Uh, right. The edge receivers have not given them a tremendous amount of production yet. No. Uh, Javion Tucker on the outside, eight catches for 80 yards and a touchdown. But your two leading receivers are so Tyler Wilson and TJ Hall. Both of those guys are slot guys. Uh, and that's good that those guys have worked. But one of the big differences uh, this offense this year versus last year, you had Jalen Browder on the edge last year that they could push the ball down the field. And even though Isaiah Scott was normally working in the slot, he was the guy who could move out to the edge and they could push the ball down the field with him. And right. so finding replacements in that production has been a challenge, whereas the Tyler Wilson and TJ Hall have continued to put up the same mm. kind of production that they put up a year ago. Let's talk about the defense for this Faulkner ball club. And we'll, we'll go to David Turner here in just a moment uh, as we get to look at the Cumberlands. But the defense has been the calling card. And for a Rob Gray coach team, that's what you would anticipate. Yes. Uh, Jarrell Williamson, a big pick six and eight of the 85-yard variety a couple of weeks ago. Uh, you, you got Jalen Clemens, who has, was the um, Mid-South Conference Defensive Player of the Week two weeks ago against Point. Yes. Um, had another interception last week on the road in a good game against Georgetown. It has very much been a bend-don't-break defense. Yes, it very much has because – when teams have been able to find the groove, they can typically find the lanes which they can move the passing game forward. But for but also there's been whole quarters and even longer than that when the defense is able to stymie the other team's offense, especially, like you said, strength in the secondary. And, of course, a lot of that. Last week, Samaj Washington was playing yeah. with his hair on fire. Oh, yeah. Great week for Samaj Washington last week. Double-digit tackle numbers for the linebacker has elevated him to second on this ball club yes. with 17 tackles, three of them for a loss, and he's got a sack and a pass breakup in there. Uh, the the leading tackler on this team, though, Jarrell Williamson, the yes. guy that, that they moved from linebacker out to that strong safety spot this year, 26 tackles for him on the year, two of those in the backfield. Of course, the 85-yard pick six. But it's a defense that, again – has had some issues uh, with generating pass rush, and they have managed to find some answers in, in the people of Jamichael Morgan and Terry Brown 
over the last couple of ball games. each of them now with a couple of sacks on the season. Uh, and you're facing a Cumberlands team today that doesn't turn it over very much. They, they've fumbled it three times this year. They've not yet thrown a pick. So the discipline of this Faulkner defense is going to be very important today. Yes, it will be. They, I think that's going to be one of the big keys if they're able to force turnovers. Now, of course, some weeks they'd, they've done that, but they've also still given up big plays. Reinhardt, they won the turnover battle, but they still couldn't get off the field in critical downs. But – if you're able to get both things more consistently, get stops, and take advantage of turnovers, faulkner has got a good shot. Absolutely. That's Joel Sellers. He is the beat writer for FaulknerEagles.com, a valuable member of our Faulkner Sports Network staff. Stepped in and gave us the, the lowdown on Faulkner. We'll hand the headset over to David Turner now as we get ready for game broadcast. And uh, thank you so much, Joel, for your work and, and all the wonderful work that you do. Listen, uh, FaulknerEagles.com. Go read Joel's work. He is an excellent writer. Um, he was a, a about as good of a writer as an 18-year-old that I have ever seen, and he's only gotten better and better. Uh, so go check out the work of Joel Sellers on FaulknerEagles.com. David Turner joining us now. David, this is a Cumberland's ball club that they're coming off of a 37 to 10 loss last week against Lindsey Wilson, which kind of makes their points per game number a little deceptive. They allow 16.3 yeah. points per game, 37 of those points to Lindsey Wilson, just 12 between the Union and St. Andrews games. So, again, though, it, it's really hard to kind of pinpoint who Cumberland's is based off that uh, because you got blowout wins over Union and St. Andrews, 30-6 to six and 44-6, to six, and then you lose 37-10. to 10 against the number three team in the country. So the answer to Cumberland's is probably somewhere in the middle. Right. It, it more than likely is, is, is when you're looking at that, those two blowout losses you mentioned the first two games, Lindsey Wilson, the number three team in the country, you, you might expect that, that they would lose that ball game to some degree, but you look at some of those numbers, and you and I talked earlier when we are looking at some of these numbers, an interesting stat for this Cumberland team is they have not allowed a point coming out of the half in the third quarter, which that tells you a lot about this coaching staff and the, yeah. the adjustments that they can make moving from that first half into that second half, which is a, a great determining factor for them. And, and probably a lot of those points, 23 of them, were scored uh, for the Cumberlands coming in that third quarter, their second most productive quarter, the other one being the first, which has been a bit of a bugaboo for this Faulkner team over the past couple of years, coming out of the shoot and getting points on the board quickly uh, for them. I want to talk about a couple of these linebackers on this Cumberland Patriot ball club. Walker Dunn, listed at 6'2", 205 as a sophomore outside linebacker from Athens, Alabama. Walker Dunn, the second leading tackler on this team with 22 stops, but six of those have been made in the backfield, including a sack. Got a couple of pass breakups. And combined with Adam Cottle, who is the leading tackler on this team, 5'11", 220-pound linebacker out of Chattanooga, Tennessee, a sophomore. Cottle, 24 tackles on the year, two and a half of those for loss, a pass breakup, and a fumble recovery to boot. This has been a disruptive combo of linebackers for this Cumberland's team. I'm really in intrigued to see them work today. And against a Faulkner offense that has had struggles up front, that has had struggles in the ground game, as we yeah. talked about, less than three yards per carry. Those are two guys you've definitely, uh, you know they've circled on game film coming in. Yeah, it absolutely has to be, especially you've got to make sure that offensive line can get off into that second level, get those guys blocked. Even, even in that, you said that the tackles for loss, they're not necessarily getting sacks. Dunn has one sack. Uh, Cottle has half of a sack, so they're, it's not necessarily that they're getting to the quarterback, but with the problems that the, the Eagles have had up front with that offensive line, that's got to be on your radar at least. Hey, these guys are getting into the backfield in some degree, whether it's in the run game. We've got to be protective of that in the pass as well, and they have another guy on this defense, number 47, Noah Steen. He is a sophomore Mike linebacker out of Birmingham. He hasn't had a lot of playing time, just two games played, but he has six tackles, but four of those have been in the backfield. Yeah, a disruptive linebacker group. Let's take a look at 
some expected starters. First off, you've got captains out there for both teams at midfield right now. Uh, looks like number 49, Emmanuel Allen, number 38, Caden Davis, both out there for Faulkner, as well as – looks is that Jalen Clemens? It is Jalen Clemens out there at number 12 and number 73, Philip Jackson, your captains for Faulkner, and I'm going to let you get those numbers on the Cumberland's captains on the other side. Is your eyes older than mine, but a little better? Gee, thanks for that. You're, uh, you're, you're quite welcome. I know one of them is number 60, Micah Gibson, because he is a large human being at 6'3", 300 pounds, the sophomore yes. from Gardendale, Alabama. The other one uh, that I know for sure is, I believe, is number 17, Miles Simon, the defensive lineman, six foot, two hundred twenty-five pounds from Augusta, Georgia, the senior, and the other one looks I like number twenty-one, Walker Dunn. All right, so uh, who we have talked about. So listen, uh, Ben Nixon, your starting quarterback for this Cumberland football team or Cumberland's football team, is fifty-three of ninety-one on the season, five hundred forty-three yards and five touchdowns. He's he's been incredibly efficient for them. Just I know fifty eight percent completion, but the big deal there is he hasn't thrown the ball away. He averages one hundred and eighty one yards per game. He's not throwing the ball to the other team. They've not thrown a pick all year long in now a hundred pass attempts as a team. That's it's pretty good. That's very good. Uh, it's a, it's a nice job by him taking care of the football, knowing that that what a possession means to a football team, but also not giving the other team the advantage of, of momentum and all of those things, just turning the ball over. They've done a great job of that. As you mentioned that in the pregame just here a minute ago, just a few t uh, fumbles for them on the season. And then you look defensively, they have caused six fumbles over the course of three games. So that's another thing to, to put a pin on here as we just are about to get this game going here. Again, Jeremy Smith alongside David Turner bringing you the call in this one. Cumberland's in at 2-1. and one. Faulkner in at 1-2 and two overall. Fall has begun to rear its head a little bit this weekend as we had a cold front move into the area last night. And don't get if you're if you're not from around here don't misunderstand what we mean by cold front we yes. mean it's not a hundred <laughs> outside it game time temp right now the anticipated high today originally was going to be around 90 they're saying much lower now around 86 in game time temp at the moment 83 degrees as we're ready to kick off in this one anticipated starters for that Cumberland offense David Turner first along that offensive line Offensive line, if we're going off there too deep, it's going to be number 54, Kiotis, Kiotis Haslam. At left tackle, at left guard, Nick Buzzle, number 73. At center, number 60, Micah Gibson. Right guard, number 77, Nick Back. And right tackle, number 75, Blake Gresham. Maybe. Who knows? Maybe. That's the thought, yeah. perhaps. Be ready to kick this one away. Again, it'll be Ben Nixon at quarterback, the 6'4", 210-pound junior. Running back behind him is number three, the sophomore Philip, uh, Philip Garner, who is number three. The tight end, number 89, Skylar Schmidt, 6'7", 225-pound freshman. Ball caught at the 20-yard line, working upfield toward the 25 and around the right side. He'll be run out of bounds. Not a guy you normally see returning a kick in number 51, but Bronson Bates – the freshman from Williamsburg, Kentucky, the man on the return on that one. Your wideouts for this offense, according to the two deep, you're looking at number 18, the sophomore Elijah Howard, number 81, the junior Jacob Ward, and number four, the junior A.P. Parham. We'll talk more about these guys as we go through this, this contest. So Cumberland starts the possession on their own 28-yard line. Three wide to the left and one to the right momentarily as we await for the officials to place the football. I think getting a ball out there is, is the problem right now. All right. And they're swapping that out. So Getting rid of the kick ball. Yeah, getting rid of the ball that was kicked, putting a new ball out. Apparently they don't like that one either. All right, we're going to talk about the football again. And 
Now we still await another ball. All right. So, excellent pace to start the ball game here. And the umpire gets the ball in his hand and then throws it back immediately as the ball has come in from the Cumberland side. I think what they were waiting for was a ball from the Cumberland side yeah. because each team's supposed, supposed to bring their to. own ball this year. Trips to the left, one to the right. Quarterback out of the gun. He'll take the snap. Drops, looks, fires. He'll pull it, tuck, run. There he goes. He'll get about five yards on the carry as he is brought down by number 16, Darius Williams. So Ben Nixon with a, a game that keeps his team ahead of the chains right at five yards. That was a nice block up front by number 70, Logan Stevens, giving Nixon that, that running lane to allow him to pick up that five yards. Out of the gun again. There is the give. He'll try right tackle. He'll be stood up, spun around, and taken down. The first man there for Faulkner was number 13, Kylan Wimbish, as the ball carrier was number 45, Martiz Smith, the junior out of Decatur, Georgia. Ball back on the 31 now. It's going to make it third down and about seven. Tyrese Wells exits the game for the Faulkner defense. Referee steps off the ball, allowing play to proceed. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. A back flanks Nixon to his right. He'll await the snap. Fakes the give and drops. Looks, fires it downfield. He's got a man, and he overthrew him. So Nixon had his man. It was Elijah Howard who had about a step and a half on the defensive back that time. Nixon couldn't get enough loft on that throw, and it's three and out for the Faulkner defense. A great, great ball by Howard stepping into that throw, getting it down there, just or Nixon rather, uh, just overthrew like you said Howard on the run. But again, when you look at the pocket that Nixon had, he had nobody in his face. No. He was able to look at that play, develop downfield, and and get a good shot deep on this defense. There's the snap to your punter. He will kick it away. Checks up and takes a good bounce, Ooh. and he is hit as soon as he fields it. Nice job by Chris Thompson not to turn that ball yeah, over. That was dangerous to grab that ball at that point with the defender coming barreling down on you. But an excellent punt flips the field, puts Faulkner back at their own 26-yard line. The punter on that play was number 36, Harlan Brown. The ball on the 26-yard line, the Faulkner offense will – Take its first shot of the ball game. Ben Anderson is the man that draws the start here. Raquan Beal was the man listed on the uh, atop the two deep, but it is Ben Anderson. Trips to the right, two to the left, no back. That is Bolton, who's typically running back, and now he motions into the running back spot. Anderson takes the snap. He will feed Bolton, and Bolton is stacked up at the line of scrimmage and nowhere to go for him with – Four different Cumberland's defenders right there in his face, and the first play amounts to nothing. Uh, yeah, and those four Cumberland defenders were right there as soon as he he got the football in the backfield. Just a, a great job by them making that read and getting back there and causing some damage on first down. Twins to either side. Bolton is the back to the right of Ben Anderson. Anderson claps and awaits the snap, gets it, drops, looks, fires, jump, that is – to Bolton, he dumps it off, gets it to about the 25-yard line. So not very much there. Is the, they're still a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage, and it's going to make it third down and 11. Is there laundry on the other side of the field? There was. Cumberland's was offsides originally, but I, I thought the linebacker might have gotten back before the snap. And it looks like – are they waving it off? Looks like they're waving it off. It should be third down. They signal the white hat signaled second down. Okay. All right, now we're stepping it <clears throat> off. Now we're stepping it off. Okay, there it is. So that will move the ball to the 29-yard line. Second and seven. Trips to the left, one to the right. Ben Anderson out of the gun. 
Looks to be Tim Cody, the back next to him, I think. But I can't quite tell. There's the snap. Anderson tucks it, runs, and he is brought down. Combination of 25 and 17 on the tackle. That's Cortez Brown and Miles Simon with the sack of Ben Anderson. That's number 21 in the backfield for the Eagles, who is listed it's as Corinthian, Corinthian Cunningham. Cunningham. Yeah, the freshman. Twins to either side now. Ben Anderson out of the gun. Takes the snap, drops, looks, fires, and the ball pops out, and they're going to go forward, pass incomplete. But Ben Anderson gets absolutely rocked on the hit, and it's a that, three and out. That's never fun to take a hit like that when you're going back to throw the football and just get blindsided in that fashion. Man, that, that's, yeah. that's never fun. He's slow to get up, understandably. So Ben Anderson will head off the field, and Faulkner will punt it away. Return man back around his own 35-yard line for the Patriots. There's the snap. Caden Davis's kick is high. It'll be fair caught at the 35-yard line, and Cumberland will take over there. Ball was secured by J.R. Lucas, the senior out of Shelbyville, Kentucky. They'll give him the 36-yard line. So, Cumberland with its second look on offense as the teams trade three and outs. And that was, it's not necessarily a surprise. We expected the defense of both of these teams to be pretty good today. Yeah, as they have been really all season for both teams. Just look at looking at some of the numbers, you can tell that. There is the give. He'll go left guard. Marvin Payton will be the man on the stop. That was 45 tackling 45 on that run. That was Martez Smith on the run. Ball up to the 41-yard line. Martez Smith, a junior out of Decatur, Georgia. Second and five now. Trips to the right, one to the left. Out of the gun. There's the snap. Drops, looks, fires, caught short of the sticks. He'll break the tackle, pick up the first down, and then some as he works down the sideline. And finally, Marvin Payton and others involved in the stop there. But it's a big first down play to Parham, the wide out. A.P. Parham, junior out of Millen, Georgia. And that was a nice job by Chris Thompson reading the play. He had it dissected, just another, a good move by Parham getting around him and picking up the first down. Bull on the Faulkner 44-yard line. Nixon out of the gun. Twins to either side. He's got a swing route, and that's where he'll throw it. And the hit, he bounces off of him, and he will get about an eight-yard gain here on first down on the swing play. Chris Thompson makes the stop. And the number on the reception was 27, it looked like. Javari White, the 5'6", 175-pound running back. Out of Lake Placid, Florida. Twins to the right, one to the left. Nixon out of the gun, flanked by a back on either side. Faulkner shows three down linemen on the play. He'll give it going around right tackle. He picks up the first down and then some. So moving the ball pretty efficiently down the field, that give was to Philip Garner. Garner. The sophomore out of Georgetown, Kentucky, makes it another first down. And we're almost seeing every play a new back coming into the backfield for, for the Cumberlands, for the Patriots here. Uh, just really rotating them out, keeping them fresh, and you're seeing it already early on in the ballgame. Empty backfield here. Nixon looks, scrambles, rolling to his right, fires down the sideline, throws it away. And, again, we talked about they've not thrown a pick all year, and it's decisions like that that are part of the reason. Absolutely. You, uh, I like seeing that from a quarterback. When you're, you're flushed out of the pocket and you don't try to force anything down the field, you just throw the ball out of bounds, you live to fight for second down, 
and, and just keep yourself knowing that, hey, I've got two more shots at this. I don't have to force anything right now. Twins to the left, one to the right. There's a tight end on the right. Out of the gun. Nixon fakes the give. He'll be stacked up by most of the Faulkner defensive line. First one in there for the Eagles was number eight, Trey Wilkins, the linebacker transfer who came from the University of Buffalo, native of Stone Mountain, Georgia. It's number 14 on the carry for the Patriots, Jamar Nubby, 5'11", 210-pound sophomore back. Faulkner making its changes on the defensive side. Looks like Kalante Varner stepping off the field and Shinconi Lewis onto the field. There's the snap, the drop on this big third and long. They're going to get to Nixon, and they spin him down for the sack. Big time sack for Faulkner, number 16, Darius Williams is the man. And that's huge because not only does it force the change of possession or force the fourth down, but it pushes them out of field goal range. Yeah, that was a huge play. Great job by – by the Eagle defense getting home. Uh, you saw a good push by the defensive line, obviously bringing the, bit, the blitz with the corner, getting him, getting him in there and picking up that sack. That punt will be downed by the gunner at about the six, maybe the seven-yard line. It's a nice punt. It was a good punt. A little coffin corner kick. And now Faulkner pinned back inside its own 10-yard line. Went three and out their first possession. We'll see what the answer is here. It is Ben Anderson in at quarterback. Working from the seven-yard line. Twins right, one left. Anderson out of the gun. He'll take the snap. There's the give. Working left guard. He'll get about two or three yards. That's John Bolton on the on the carry for Faulkner. Nice patience by Bolton, allowing his blockers to set something up for him because as soon as he got the football, he didn't have much to do uh, anywhere to go, really. But his patience allows a little bit of a hole to open up. He picks up a couple of yards, makes it at least second and eight. Ben Anderson will go out of the gun again. Faulkner on its own nine-yard line. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. He gives it on the jet around left tackle. Ball's out. Somebody, oh, somebody lost a helmet. He did keep the okay. ball. So the carry went to Tyler Wilson. It was the helmet of an offensive lineman, Corey Dates. Lost the helmet on the play. The way Wilson came around that corner, he took a shot. It looked like yeah. the ball was not with him. <laughs> yeah. He did get it to the 15-yard line, though. It's going to bring up third and about two. Working near the right hash. Twins to the left, one to the right. There's the snap. There's the give. He'll push forward. Now I think he got the first down. So a first down run. Faulkner moves the chains. That was Drexel and Allen on the carry. Allen, a native of Hattiesburg, Mississippi, transfer from Kapaya Lincoln. Ball on the 18-yard line. Anderson out of the gun again, trips to the left, one to the right. Corinthian Cunningham is the man in the backfield with him. Anderson takes the snap. There's the give, Corinthian Cunningham. He will work it forward to about the 18-yard line. So no gain on the play. You can definitely see a difference in Faulkner's intent in this ball game as they are really trying to establish the run. And they, you talked about it with... Cumberland's in the way they're rotating backs. You're seeing the same thing out of Faulkner right now. Yeah, you really are. And, and 
this team does have several backs who are good enough to get playing time, and we're seeing some of that even with uh, Cunningham now getting some action here in this second home game where we've been able to see them, at least live, him getting some good carries here in the first quarter. Now there are no backs. Empty set, four receivers to the left. He'll throw over into the flat. That ball caught and worked up the field by – we've got Ty Simpson there. Ty Simpson – Originally listed as a defensive back, but has started to get some reps at receiver. So Ty Simpson on the reception. And going to get a flag on the play, which is not what you need when you're struggling to stay in front of the chains. And it's going to be a big one. Had to be a hold up yeah. run at some point. Holding. Going to move the ball all the way back inside the 10-yard line. So, second and 20. And they'll work left hash. Now they'll flip the four receivers over to the strong side of the field. Get a signal for the stop. As the officials will come together and have a conversation. We'll see the call if anything changes here. And the officials with some tempo issues of their own to start the game. Now they will return to their positions. Call apparently stays. It does, and now the play clock begins to run. Trips to the right, one to the left, one back in the backfield, second down and 20. Not a lot in the playbook for this situation. Get what you can. There is the give. He'll try the middle, and he'll get maybe a yard at best. They'll move him up to the nine-yard line, and that was Corinthian Cunningham on the carry. Make it third down and 19 for Faulkner. So third and 19. And this is a situation you don't want to do anything to try to cause a turnover. So we'll probably see, I would imagine, a run play here. Just try to keep, keep it on the ground, use a little clock, and, and punt the ball away. Trips to the right, one to the left. Man out of the gun again is Ben Anderson. One back in the backfield with him. You know they're going to pin their ears and come right after Anderson, and he throws a duck, and it's batted down and picked off. It's exactly what you wanted to avoid there is that one hung in the air far too long and was picked off by Toby Atawale, the junior out of Lebanon, Tennessee, and there's a flag on the field, and it's against Offsides. Cumberland's. Offsides Cumberland, so a saving grace there for no kidding. the Eagle offense after that. Yeah, and that, the Eagle defense, which yeah, is about to be yeah. really up against it. So we'll go offsides here, negate the interception. What you think you saw, you did not see. Ball's on the 14-yard line. So now we're third and 14. Sure. Eagles into the huddle. Twins to the right, one to the left. There is a tight end to the left, and Cunningham is the man in the backfield next to Ben Anderson. Anderson awaits the snap, takes it, drops, looks. He'll scramble. He's got a little bit of a lane. Anderson making something out of nothing here and nearly got to the sticks, but he'll come up shy. Well, he might not. Know. Let's they, see where the spot is. He's getting a generous spot. They're they gave it, it to down. him. Ben Anderson with a first down run on the scramble. And Faulkner moves the chains after what looked to have been a third down interception deep in their own territory. They get the offside call, and Ben Some, Anderson makes some magic. Somebody send that far line judge a, a thank you card <laughs> for that one. That was a generous spot. He's, yeah. <laughs> he saw the spot. He liked it. And uh, Faulkner will be, will be the beneficiary. Twins to the right, twins to the left, one back in the backfield. He awaits the snap. Anderson looks, pressure in his face, and he is thrown down Nobody. the sack. And there's a flag. They're going to they're gonna call an unnecessary roughness here. 
This will be a personal foul. It is 15 yards. So. Because he had been slung yeah. down when number 21, Walker Dunn, came through. But to Walker Dunn's defense, Ben Anderson didn't actually go down. It he didn't look like acted he did. like he didn't. So well, He had pushed his way up, and Dunn yeah. was just playing through. So may, they may be blue progress. I don't know. But the only thing they could call there is a personal foul. Yeah, that's, that's the only thing they can call in that situation if you're going to throw the flag. Well, here's the, here's the thing. If it's not a personal foul – then that's the spot of the ball. Exactly. <laughs> like, yeah. You can't have the ball up where they've got it if it's not a personal foul. He either was on his feet and it was not yeah. a late hit, or he was not on his feet and it was a late hit. What's and, the call? And that was done coming in. Absolutely nobody picked him up on the blitz Absolutely. right to the quarterback. There it is. Targeting. Targeting. Whoa. They called targeting. That – that means Dunn's out of the ball game. Walker Dunn. Yeah. We talked about Walker Dunn coming into the ball game. He is. He's been incredible for them this year. He's been and in the backfield all year long, and now he's been kicked out of the ball game. Six tackles for loss coming into the game. And if I'm done in that coaching staff, I'm hot about that call. I mean, wow. I don't, personal foul. Yeah, you can argue that all day long, but targeting, I don't. I didn't see anything wow. like that. Well, I mean, there were. I mean, I guess are they calling that he launched? I, I, wow. I, who knows what targeting is anymore? Well, but now the ball goes to the thirty-two yard line, and it's a first down for Faulkner. Twins to the left, twins to the right, and the big story is that Walker Dunn's been ejected from the ball game. That's a key player for this defense. Twins right. All right, you've been given two gifts here on this this possession. Let's see if they can make anything out of it. There's the snap. Drops, looks, swings it out. Moving up the field, 35-40. Runs into his own man and gets out of bounds. That's Corinthian Cunningham, and that was a momentum-swinging kind of play right there. Yeah. It absolutely is, especially when you're taking away one of the leaders of that defensive unit for the Patriots. You, you've you got an opportunity now on this drive to do something to get yourself that momentum to, to take some of the wind out of the sails for them on the other side. You just got to cash it in at this point. Ball on the 43-yard line. Garrett Orr will check into the game, replacing Sean Vincent. Twins to the right, one to the left. Or is the H back to the left side. Give is to Corinthian Cunningham, left guard. Cunningham pushes it up to about the 47-yard line. So a solid gain on first down. We'll make it second and six. Shout out our buddy Nick Finch, who's out there watching right now. You're out there. You want to let us know. We'll try to get to you as we have a moment. Email us fsn at faulkner.edu, fsn at faulkner.edu. Let us know who you are, who you are watching for, and where you are watching from. FSN at Faulkner.edu. Two men to the right, two to the left as far as the receiving core goes. Corinthian Cunningham next to Ben Anderson in the backfield. Anderson awaits the snap. He'll take it. He'll drop. He'll look, step up, and find Sean Vincent over the middle, throws it in the window between two defenders. It's another first down, and they are into Cumberland's territory for the first time. Great job, great presence, and good throw by Anderson on that on that play right there. You saw him work back on his drop, defenders coming around the edge. He just simply takes a couple of steps up, gets his feet set, makes a good strong throw, as you said, right in that window, right in the middle of the field, in between those two linebackers. And it's interesting, the, the difference in what Faulkner is doing offensively right now, much more deliberate. They're not getting signals in from the sideline. The quarterback is running over, getting the play, and running back to the huddle. Trips right, one left. Much more of an old-school look right now for this offense. Anderson tucks it. He will scramble ahead and get to about the 40-yard line to keep his team ahead of the chains. Nice job taking what the defense gives you by Anderson. Picks up five, makes it a res very respectable second down here. 
Ball on the 40-yard line. It looks like they're going to let that play out here the first quarter. And if you're Faulkner and the defense has been your calling card, the best thing you can do is a ball control offense and help that defense out, and they've done that so far. Absolutely. Keep your defense off the field. Keep them fresh. Allow them to continue to, to create a little bit of havoc and do the things that they've been doing well all season. We will pause and head to the second quarter. This is the Faulkner Sports Network presentation of Faulkner Eagle Football. Hi, my name is Mikey Peavy. I'm the third generation here at AMP Auto. Looking for a good used pickup truck? We got them. A good used car? We got them. A good SUV? We got them. Come see us at AMP Automotive today. AMP Automotive is family owned and in the Shout out to our buddy Chuck Knapp, who's out there watching. Longtime Faulkner football coach, who's breaking film down right now for his general ball club over at Georgia Christian. A man to either side in the receiving core. Tight end to the right, H back to the right. Jonathan Bolton to the left in the backfield. Ben Anderson will give it to Bolton. Bolton shakes the first man. 35, 30, down to about the 27, 28-yard line. And you want your back to make somebody miss in that situation. Bolton did, and there he goes, weak side run. And a formation that we don't often see out of this Eagle offense. Two backs in the backfield, only two receivers out wide, tight ends in tight. So you typically know the running play is coming. And as you said, Bolton does a great job making that first man miss. And once you do that as a running back, you're looking upfield, you're looking at that second and third level. Ball on the 27-yard line. The referee holding everything. Now he signals. Receiver to either side, same formation, and that nobody, nobody was set on that one. You can yeah. pick a number. There were about three or four blue jerseys still in motion when the snap came. So false start on Faulkner puts him behind the chains. That can be a drive killer. We'll see how they respond here. It's got first down now and 15 now for the Eagle offense. Two receivers out wide. Anderson is the quarterback, and he's got Bolton to his left. Out of the gun. Anderson gives it to Bolton. Works ahead. Brought down at the 29-yard line. Or they'll give him the 28, so right back to the line of scrimmage, no gain. Cunningham will check in and in the backfield as Bolton will check out. Ben Anderson gets the play, runs it back in. The tight end and the H back come out. You get a couple more receivers in. Now that you're in second and 15, you're going to have to make something happen downfield. Bolton to the left of Anderson. Anderson drops, looks. He'll tuck it and go. Ben Anderson takes what he can get and gets it to about the 22-yard line which makes it a much more manageable third down here. It's a great job recognizing by Anderson. He took back, made that pump fake, got the defender up in the air, and then just took off on that, on that action. Picks up a good chunk of yards, makes it a third and manageable now for the Eagle offense. Ben Anderson bringing the play in from the sideline again. Twins to the right, twins to the left. Drexlin Allen is the tailback. Anderson resets things, play clock at four, three. He's got to get it off. He does, drops, looks, scrambles, 
wrapped up and taken down. Was nowhere to go for Ben Anderson on that play. And it was 25 and 29, the two men that got to him there. 25 is Cortez Brown and 29, Trenton Tuttle. And that was a situation where Anderson probably should have taken off again. He made the first guy kind of miss, stepped up into that, that pocket, and then went right back into the arms of the defender but from behind. But he, he probably could have at least been close to a first down just taken off out of the pocket there. 45-yard field goal attempt here for Caden Davis. A 45-yard attempt. Snap, hold, kick. Does it have the distance? It does. And he hooks it inside the upright. It's a 45-yarder for Caden Davis, and Faulkner strikes first here at the Bill. Eleven fifty four remaining in the opening half. Faulkner with a three nothing lead after the forty five yard field goal from Caden Davis on a drive that started back at their own seven yard line. And as you start to look, time of possession numbers right now heavily in favor of Faulkner after that long drive. Yeah, it certainly is. And if you're the Eagles, that's that's what you want. Play that possession game, slow the pace down. Allow you that defense to, to get some air and, and be back on the field. And when they're on the field, be able to attack. Ball kick to the 10-yard line. 25, 30, 35, 40. He's in the opening. And it is number 17, Ty Simpson, that brings him down and might have saved a touchdown. More than likely did. Nice job by Patriot return man reading the blocks in front of him. They've got an injured eagle down on the field. Injured Eagle on the field as they tend to him. Can't quite make out who that is down on the field. But that was a good return there by the Patriots. Gets the ball out all the way out up to the 49-yard line. So almost starting in Eagle territory. As they've got a good shot now to put some points on the board. And if they can tie this ball game or or get the lead with 11.46 remaining here in the half. We'll take some time here while they're looking at the injured eagle on the field. Taryn McNeely will walk off the field with a little bit of assistance. He'll get ready to snap this ball. Good crowd out here today for Faulkner. Man out of the gun. Receiver to either side. He's got an Tight end to the left, and he will give it to the back. Up the middle, good effort, a uh, good second effort on the run. A couple of Eagles involved in the stop as he gets across midfield into Faulkner territory. That, again, was number 45, Martise Smith on the carry. So make it about second and six from the Faulkner 47-yard line. Out of the gun, twins left, one right. There's the snap. There's the flag. Free play for the Thrown Patriots. down the sideline, incomplete. 
But it looks like it will be an offside call. It is two Eagles on either end jumping the snap count there. So Nixon recognized it took his free play. So it'll make it second and about one now for this Cumberland offense. Ball on the decline. It was they a called it, was it, a, it was offense. against okay. It was a procedural penalty against against Cumberland's and Faulkner declines. So that should make it third down. It should, should be third down. It should be third down. Okay. So they, did they go offset? I guess they went offset, maybe. I don't know. Do you know things? I don't know things. I don't things. know a thing. Ask my wife. I know that was a shot play that didn't work out, yeah. nearly <laughs> caught. So now we're third down? Are we all in agreement? So we went offsetting penalties. Okay. Offsides and a procedural penalty. So, no, no, no. It, nope. it, it looks like there was an offside and then a hold. Okay. So <laughs> you got a free play and you gave it away for yeah. the hold. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't know. Two receivers to the left, one to the right. I missed the second flag, and the left guard just stood up and backed up, and Tyrese Wells was like, where's my flag? <laughs> There's one that came from behind him. And there's the five-yard penalty. I think, I think Ty the umpire had to dig out the backup flag. Yeah. <laughs> Tyrese Wells is jumping up and down going, yeah. where's my flag? All right. Third down now. And 11. 11, 12, who knows. I think 11 is correct. Trips to the left, one to the right. Let's see if we can get back on track here. There's the snap. Looks. Over the left side, incomplete. An awkward sequence after Cumberland's got to second down and six, but ultimately a couple of penalties for a team that isn't penalized very much. Only 30 yards per game. Only about three penalties per game for them. A couple of them on that sequence. One of them won't show up on the stat sheet because it was part of an offsetting. But yet... Made a big difference there because they yeah. went from what would have been an offside to now not executing, and then you get the false start, and now they'll punt from their own territory. And that's a drive. you got to remember that they started at the their own 49-yard line, and they're punting in the, the uh, line of scrimmage is the 48. End over end, and what a roll, and it gets into the end zone. Nearly checked up. Couldn't quite down it. Got into the end zone just beyond the reach of number 28, Hancock. And Faulkner will get out of the shadow of its own goal line. Ball on the 20. I was waiting on the official to put it down. <laughs> what, you might think they don't know where they might need to put it? Uh, listen, <laughs> he, he gave it sort of a second look. Twins to the right, one to the left. Anderson out of the gun. There's an H back and a tail back. Anderson takes the snap. There's the give. Up the middle, that's John Bolton. And he'll get nothing. Second down and ten coming after Bolton is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. And they've had that off. Uh, action quite a bit the prolonged give to the back in the backfield and then the fake pass coming out of that so you've got to think they're building on something they're going to be looking at that little quick screen pass here before too long or maybe something coming around the edge off of that w that action trips to the right nope now quads to the right one to the left no back Ben Anderson takes the snap, looks, tucks. Ooh. Oh, and he's stuck. He gets back to the line of scrimmage and is absolutely stuck. That'll make it third down and 10, and that was number 37. 
Adam Cottle, the leading tackler on this team coming in. The other part of that linebacker combination we talked about in pregame. Of course, Walker Dunn ejected earlier in the game on a targeting call. A big part of this Cumberland defense, so you'll need to see somebody else step in to fill that void. Four receivers to the right, one to the left. Pressure coming from Anderson's backside on the snap. Picked up by the tackle. Throws it up for grabs, and Javion Tucker can't make the play, and Faulkner will punt it away. So Javion Tucker out jumped the defensive back, was able to get his hands on it, but wasn't able to secure it. He had it in all all likelihood. Should have been a ball. He probably feels like he should have caught. It was there for him right through his hands. He had to make a difficult play to get it. But as it stands, fourth and ten now from the twenty yard line. Caden Davis will punt it away. And that one will roll into Cumberland's territory and be down at about the 42-yard line. And the Patriot offense with good field position will set up again. Ball on the 42. Twins to the right. One to the left. Nixon will work out of the gun. Back to his left. He'll take the snap. Throws the screen look. And working upfield to stay ahead of the chains. There's a bunch of eagles there. And they finally blow it dead, maybe. Last two guys off the pile for Faulkner. Jalen Clemens. And maybe Taryn McNeely involved in there. There's Parham on the catch for the Patriots. They'll give him about seven yards yeah. on the reception. Up to about the 49-yard line. That was a screen and a scrum that gained seven. Two to the left, one to the right. Nixon out of the gun again. Has a tight end to the left. Nixon throws it to Parham on the screen look. He'll work down the sideline. First down and plenty more. Well into Faulkner territory as he heads out of bounds around the 35-yard line. And on the same play just to the other side of the field. Parham that time able to escape and make something big out of it. Nixon, there's the give to White. White drives his legs forward. Good leg drive on that play by White. Most of the yard is coming after contact. Gets it to the 29-yard line, a gain of six, and the Patriots have something working here. They're looking to move this tempo up, make this defense work. There's the snap. White, right tackle, first down, and a little more. Wrapped up, taken down. Looks like Trey Wilkins, the first man there. First down at the 21-yard line. Ball on the 21-yard line. Out of the gun. We'll go Nixon. The snap, fakes the give, throws it complete on the slant route. And that's another first down, and the tempo really benefiting the Patriots right now. That was a really nice route by the receiver. I believe it was number 86, Romeo McKnight, 5'9", 160-pound receiver. But he did a nice job setting up the defensive back. He ran upfield, acted like he was going to go out toward the sideline, then came right back in on that slant route. Great job setting up that that defensive back and getting inside and getting that catch. Trips right, twins left. Nixon throws it underneath. Parham makes the man miss and into the end zone he goes. And that is an iron yard touchdown pass from Ben Nixon to A.P. Parham and Cumberland's with the answer. They take the 6-3 lead. 
So tempo change for them, big time benefit, kept Faulkner's defense off balance. They weren't able to run players in and out the way they had been. And now the extra point attempt coming for the Patriots. Snap, hold, kick, up, and good. That one, number 50, it looks like on the kick, Job Matosian. Job Matosian with the extra point. It's a 7-3 University of the Cumberland's lead here on the Faulkner Sports Network. Punted back to, or kicked off rather, back inside the 10-yard line. Fielded by Chris Thompson and returned out to around the 25. So, Faulkner takes over. It's on 25-yard line looking for an answer with 5 or 6-13 rather left here in the opening half in a 7-3 ball game. Twins to the left, twins to the right. Snap to Anderson. He'll roll to his left, tries to evade the tackler and can't do it. And that is a big time loss on that sack. That is Number 25, Cortez Brown, who gets back there again. And a big loss. And there's another situation. Anderson gets the snap and then immediately runs for his life. His two defenders are in his face almost as soon as he gets the, the snap. Ball on the 11-yard line. Second and 24, four receivers in the formation. Anderson drops, Anderson throws it over. Working right side, Tim Cody. Cody taken down at the 17-yard line. So, Cody with the six yard gain, make it third and about 18. Not a situation you wanna be in in this right now. And we saw him earlier throw, make a pass in this situation on the other side of the field, so. Man was in the neutral zone at the snap. There is no flag. Ben Anderson throws it away as he couldn't see over the rush. And there is the flag. It came out a little late. That should be a free play. Offsides on Cumberland's. That's going to make it third and about 13. Move the ball to the 22-yard line. Play clock at 15. No need to rush. Still got all your timeouts. Twins left, twins right. Anderson out of the gun. The snap, drops, looks, pressure. Gets away from it. Now he'll take off, and he'll get about two yards. He's brought down by number 33, Dylan Preston. 
They give him to the 31 or the 26-yard line, right? So they give him four, which got him a yard past the original line of scrimmage. And they'll punt it away here on fourth and nine with a little over four minutes left in the opening half. You'd be fine if your punter milked the clock here. They'll snap it with 22 left on the play clock. Fair catch back at the 37-yard line. And again, solid field position for University of the Cumberlands as they take over this possession with a four-point lead. A solid punt from Davis. Getting a little bit of pressure in his face. Able to get the good punt off and at least, like you said, put them back inside their own 40-yard line. Ball on the 37. There's the snap. Give works left. Wrapped up, taken down by Jamichael Morgan. Nice play by Morgan. Getting that stop, getting in that hole, closing it. Trips to the right, two to the left. Nixon out of the gun. There's the snap, drops, looks, throws it left. Caught and he steps out of bounds. That was number 86, Romeo McKnight, on the catch. And I'm pretty sure the Eagles just went through that play with 10 players on the field. I think you're right. Because you saw one come on and nobody yeah. go off. So third down. There's the snap. Fires left side. has got the first down to Parham again. AP Parham doing some real work. Cordell King on the tackle. Right on the 50-yard line. Parham, four catches for 47 yards here on the afternoon. Nixon, nice play there on the end of round. He'll work forward and be wrapped up and taken down. The number 16, Darius Williams on the tackle. Elijah Howard on the carry. Ball on the 48-yard line. Howard gained about three on that run. 2-17 and counting in the half here. Twins to the left, one to the right. Two backs in the backfield. There's the give. He'll go left tackle, and there's a flag. Faulkner's going to be the beneficiary of a holding call as Samaj Washington was held coming off the left end. Jarrell Williamson got in on the stop, but Kadonis Haslam had... Samaj Washington hemmed in. And that will be a 10-yard penalty against Cumberland's here. Make Slow some of this momentum. Second and 17 now. Theoretically. He'll put it back on the, all the way back to the 43-yard line. So second and 17. Trips to the left, one to the right. Nixon out of the gun. He'll drop, he'll look, he'll throw it to McKnight. He makes the first man miss, works up the sideline. McKnight gets near the sticks when he should have been it. dead to rights and he got the first down. He looked dead to rights there after about two or three yards and he made everybody miss. Got all the way to the Faulkner 39-yard line. Great job by Nixon getting the ball out when he did quickly. And then just a great individual effort. Then the first down comes when the defender hits him really across the line to gain. Ball on the 39 now, 121 and counting. Five receivers in the formation. Nixon drops. There's a flag. They'll blow it dead. White Hat says false start on the offense. 
the left tackle jumped. You saw Marvin Payton come through at the movement of the left tackle. So that's going to make it first and 15 here. And again, we've talked about this is a team that's not penalized very much. They average 30 yards per game and just three penalties per game. They've been penalized seven times here in the first half. Five receivers in the formation. Nixon awaits the snap. He'll drop. He'll look. He'll throw. It's caught, and he'll be driven backwards by Marvin Payton and looks like I can't tell the other number over there. It's Samaj Washington, it looks like. No, no. that's going to be, I no. think, maybe Terry McNeely, but I can't see the other number. Timeout taken by Cumberland's. It was 26 was the other number there. Not Terry McNeely. McNeely 25, that's Jarrell Williamson 26. <laughs> so Marvin Payton, Jarrell Williamson on the stop. It will be second and about 14 when we come back. We pause just for a moment. Faulkner Sports Network. There's the snap, drops, scrambles, rolls left, throws it across his Caught. body in a catch. What a throw yeah. into that window across his body. Yeah, across his body, sets his shoulders, strong throw, and I think that ball caught him more than the receiver caught it. Yeah, it was Darius James who secured it. 42 and a half seconds to go in the half. You get a, another timeout by Cumberland's here. And that a huge throw. They are now 11 out of 15 through the air for 105 yards. And it, it does this. It keeps them with third and manageable. They've it got is. an opportunity now to keep this drive alive, put more points on the board, spread this lead with about 42 and a half seconds remaining till half. 42 and a half seconds remaining in a four-point ball game here as University of the Cumberland's trying to add to its lead and Faulkner's defense trying to come up with a stop. 26 plays for 136 yards so far for the Patriots. 24 plays for 46 yards for Faulkner. And a again, a 7-3 ball game as the Patriots come away from the timeout. Third down and about five. Yep, they've stretched the chain out, five. They need it to the 29-yard line. Trips to the right. Now the back swings over to the left. He'll throw it on the sit-down route. Romeo McKnight near the sticks. They give him the 30. He's a yard shot. Interesting spot because he probably actually caught the football at the, at the 29 but then made that step back, yep. and that's where he got tackled. Fourth and one. Fourth and one. They're going to 17 seconds and counting here. You think they're going to run this down and kick it, wouldn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. Wind this clock down, kick it here. Last seconds before half. Yeah. They'll, they've got one timeout in their pocket, and they'll use it with four seconds left in the half. And they, the Eagles still have three timeouts, so we could really ice the kicker here if yeah, we want to. That's true. <laughs> Four seconds remaining in the half in a 7-3 game. It's going to be what would be about a 47-yard field goal. Yep. From the right hash. Your kicker came into the year three out of four on the season. He does not have one of this length on the campaign. Yep, 
That is Job Matosian ready to kick. And a timeout taken by Faulkner to make him think about it. If you look at the numbers on Job Matosian this year, three out of four on field goals. 0 for 1, 40 to 49 range. Yep. His long of the year is 35. So this is 12 yards beyond his season long. And he will kick out of the hold of J.R. Lucas. And we'll do and it all over again. another timeout taken by Faulkner. Can't take him with you, so uh, yeah. you might as well use him. So Joe Matosian will think about it some more. Forty seven yard attempt coming, maybe momentarily. I'll try it again. Do you call the timeout here or do you make him think you're going ah. to call the timeout? Coach Gray is close to the official on the yeah, side. Yeah, he's standing right next to the official. There it is. There it is. He called the third one. So, yep, you called it. He has all three timeouts. He has iced the kicker and our lunch time. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> we'll see if it's effective he has, here. He has iced all the things. We'll see if the patience of Job pays off <laughs> as he readies to come back out for this field goal attempt after three consecutive timeouts. Job Matosian ready to – try to hit what would be a season long and give his team a touchdown lead going into the half. Ball will be on the right hash again. And partner, it's been a it's been an interesting first half. All of your offensive numbers heavily in favor of Cumberland's with the exception of time of possession. I was about to say, what was the time of possession numbers yeah. looking like? Faulkner, 1652 time of possession, 908 for Cumberland's. Samatosian, one more time. 47 yard attempt. Faulkner can't stop it this time. He puts it up, hooks, and in. So Joe Matosian waits through three timeouts to connect with a 47-yarder and give Cumberland's a 10-3 lead as we head to half. Trinity Thomas Grayson Plunkett around the corner with FSN at the half.
Hi, my name is Mikey Peavy. I'm the third generation here at AMP Auto. Looking for a good used pickup truck? We got them. A good used car? We got them. A good SUV? We got them. Come see us at AMP Automotive today. A&P Automotive is family owned and in the same location since 1985. We strive to be your one-stop shop for all your auto needs. You don't have to spend big money for a nice car. Our prices start at $3,995. We have several lenders and in-house financing available. Visit us online at anpautomotive.com. I don't know if there is anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway or give him a call at 334-676-5999. Here we are with FSN at the half. I'm Trinity Thomas along with Grayson Plunkett. Grayson, um, talking about what's going on in the game, how are both teams doing so far? Well, so far, I mean, you, what else can you say about Cumberlands? They have, they've had a great defense coming into this game, and it's showing right now with the Eagles only putting up three on the scoreboard, as well as – just a rush their pass rush I mean my goodness they're getting to the quarterback every time Ben Anderson out there just trying his best to make some to uh make the best that he can out of out of some of those rough plays and he's doing it he's doing his uh darndest I'll tell you, I'll tell you that but so far uh Cumberland's great defensive performance so far Faulkner also I'll give him I'll, I'll say this too Faulkner will also a great defensive performance as well only leaving ten, only allowing just ten up on that scoreboard right now. Moving on to the offense, what are some key strengths you've seen from Faulkner from the Faulkner offense this half of play? Well, so far it's just been Ben Anderson's ability to just avoid the pass rush. I mean, you've seen like the you've seen this team with the two quarterback system so far. And of course, Ben did start the first game, and then uh, Raquan Beal came in. Um, for the second half, and Raekwon Beal's been the starter for the past couple of games, but this week, Ben Anderson, the starter, and just so far, just his ability to make, you know, something out of nothing, only three of five so far, but in terms of uh, passing, but, and you look at the rush as well, like, only negative seven passing, or uh, rushing yards, but, I mean, it, sh it should be, 
but if you take the negative out of it, all the sack, all the sack yards and everything, I mean, the man's just been, been dynamite. He's been providing a spark for this offense. Yeah, you, you're talking about the stat sheet. What are you seeing that the stats are not showing out of both teams today? Out of both teams, I think um, it's just been a lot of – there's been a lot of um, plays where – it should have been. It should have gone a, di a different way. Like uh, earlier in the game, um, there was almost an interception that ended up being called back due to an offsides penalty. So really, now you can see it on the stat sheet. You know, Cumberland's eight penalties and for f only 56 yards, but still, every single one of those penalties ends up taking away more and more momentum from them, and it actually has helped out Faulkner a lot with just being able to revive drives, be able to get things back in motion again. So I think both I think both teams for Cumberlands, it's definitely, you know, you gotta minimize the penalties because that's what's ends up that's what's ending up shooting you in the foot. And for Faulkner, it's cap it's capitalizing more and more off of these penalties, off of these big plays, because they're gonna give up the because you see Cumberlands, they have given up some big plays against them. But Faulkner just hadn't been able to capitalize off of the plays and actually turn those into more touchdowns. So Yeah, you mentioned the defense and Cumberland's not being able to capitalize off of some of those plays. You know, Faulkner held the Patriots scoreless for 24 minutes of the game. What are you seeing in their defensive scheme that is contributing to their success? And how are they continuing to keep – and how can they continue to keep the Patriots at bay? Um, so far, I've been really impressed with some of the, D with the uh, DBs for Faulkner. I mean, they've been – doing well, keeping keeping with their man, staying in good coverage. There have been times where I will say that there have been lapses in coverage by this team, but overall there were a couple of plays down here on the deep ball where, you know, nine times out of ten, that's a touchdown, but um, the DBs for Faulkner, such as the player of the week, uh, Jalen Clement, like, I mean, my goodness, like, Twice in a row, they target for you, and you get you bat that ball away. I mean, it just big, just big time plays there made by him. So, really, all in all, for Faulkner, it's just continuing to build off of that, off of your DBs, just holding these receivers at bay, and getting that pass rush going because they they did get to him a couple of times, but but you have to, but they can keep, but it's if they can bring up the pace a little more in this se second half is what will be the key to this defensive success. Yeah, Faulkner's down by seven at the half. The score is 10 um, to three with Cumberland's leading. What do you think they need to do in order to come back and take the lead? I think it's all about protecting the quarterback, really. it's Ben Anderson has just had no time to really set and find the guy open because uh, he's because he has to break off the play and run. So I think – the best way is just try to buy um, Anderson as much time as possible to get those throws. Because I mean, and and all credit to Ben, he's taken some shots that a lot of quarterbacks don't usually get up from, and and he's taking them like a soldier today. He's probably going to have a nice visit to the ice tub after this one, but but I mean, again, it's it, it's all about just buying time, l l allowing the play to develop. So he can be able to to hit those receivers on those routes because there have been times when he's had when he's had time and he's had guys open, like he can make a play happen. And even when the play's not there, you give him enough space, he's able to break through with and use his legs to to affect this entire to affect the defense as well. So, and then also you gotta try and buy try to open some more holes for the rushing attack too. There have been guys there have been times when. The rushing attack, you know, you saw the sparks, you saw the firepower from um, from the Faulkner running backs today, um, like a, such as Corinthian Cunningham and and uh, Drexel and Allen. I mean, they've been able to find the holes and break through the line, um, but just not just can't seem to just you know break through. So I think that's going to be the key is. Just getting this offense up and running again, breaking through, you know, hold, you know, offensive line needs to hold the line. Of course, got to hold them down in the trenches, 
and all and giving not only Ben Anderson some time to let the play develop, but also giving time for these running backs to or open up holes, I should say, for the running backs so they can get through and cause havoc on that on that uh, trench. Yeah, we're looking forward to the second half of play here in about 13 minutes. This has been FSN at the Half with Trinity Thomas and Grayson Plunkett. Thank you for tuning in.
My name is Mikey Peavy. I'm the third generation here at AMP Auto. Looking for a good used pickup truck? We got them. A good used car? We got them. A good SUV? We got them. Come see us at AMP Automotive today. A&P Automotive is family owned and in the same location since 1985. We strive to be your one-stop shop for all your auto needs. You don't have to spend big money for a nice car. Our prices start at $3,995. We have several lenders and in-house financing available. Visit us online at ANPAutomotive.com. I don't know if there's anything I like better than good barbecue. Full Moon has the best barbecue and best smoked wings in town, and those onion rings are out of this world. Go buy after the game and use your ticket for a buy one, get one free barbecue sandwich. Say hi to Chris in person at 7660 East Chase Parkway, or give him a call at 334-676-5999.
second half in the offense here at Billy Dee Hilliard Stadium. The Bears will work alongside David Turner. Ball teed up on the left side. Gets away. Fielded back at the two-yard line by Chris Thompson. Cam Christian, 20 in the water. Spot on Chris Thompson. Is he okay? At the 21-yard line, he got absolutely upended. day in college football around the country. Here, it has been a story of two teams in a seven-point ball game, 10-3, to three, the advantage for the University of Cumberland. And their, their yards per play, dramatically different than Faulkner. 5.19 yards per play for the Patriots, 1.92 yards per play for Faulkner, time of possession evening out now, 16:52 for Faulkner, 13:08 for Cumberlands, and the tailback is Corinthian Cunningham, yep. and he's absolutely stacked. Soon as for he, a loss, as soon as he got the football in his hands, had a defender right on him, as he's stacked up and knocked down for at least a five-yard loss. Well, and listen, you and I talked about this in the pregame. The adjustments that Cumberland's makes at halftime work. They've not given up a point in the third quarter all season. We'll see if Faulkner can fare differently here. They're behind the chains on second down and 15. Twins to the left, one to the right. Ben Anderson out of the gun, takes a snap, drops, looks, tucks it, scrambles, throws, Ooh. nearly picked off. It falls incomplete. That's going to make it third and 15. I think the DB was surprised the ball was actually in his hands, so he, he just couldn't make the catch on it. Now third and 15 for the Eagle offense. Not the start you wanted if you're that offensive staff coming out of half. Now they'll bring a couple of receivers in, or a receiver in rather, and Sean Vincent replacing Garrett Orr. So third and 15, not a lot of things in the playbook for that. Four receivers, one back. Anderson drops. Anderson looks. Anderson sacked. Wrapped up, taken down. Two men involved in the play. 33, the man that finished him off there, that is Dylan Preston, the sophomore out of Oil Springs, Kentucky. So ball back on the nine-yard line. And Caden Davis will punt out of his own end zone. Aside from the effectiveness of the, the Patriots over five yards per play, the field position has also been heavily in their favor all day long. They've been at and around midfield to start every yeah. possession. I think their worst starting field position other than that first possession of the game was I think the 37 yard line. So they have really been in plus territory. Sounds about right. And they'll start this one about the 49 yard, their own 49 yard line. So again, <coughs> and that's a nice punt from Caden Davis just to get it that far out of your own end zone. Yeah. So Davis, a 42 yard punt. There's the snap. The give, working right side is White. Cuts back left, Marvin Payton in on the stop, along with Jarrell uh, Williamson, but he'll get to the 45-yard line, and that's second down and four. And again, more than five yards per play, the average for this Cumberland's ball club. Trey Wilkins runs in, Kalante Varner runs in. They're going to try to run Darius Williams off. They get him off just in time before the snap. Now they'll get the clock moving. Trips or two to the right and a tight end to the right. There's the snap, the give. White spins off a tackler, still going. Terry Brown will finish him off. He's going to be close to the first down marker. Looks like they're going to mark him about a yard short of it. 
So just short is Martise Smith on the carry. Mull on the 42. Twins right, one left, out of the gun. There's the snap. There's the give up the middle. Ball take, taken up to about the 37-yard line. The snap. Throws the screen. Look, Parham catches it. And he'll fight for more yardage. A.P. Parham blown dead up to the 32-yard line. But, again, we've seen that leg drive out of the Patriots on several looks today, a couple of those with A.P. Parham, where I don't know what to call that other than screen and scrum. Yes. And it's working for them. <laughs> it is, and they're doing a good job. And you see it as soon as Parham gets that ball. You see players come behind him. That way when he does get hit, they can get in and, and make that push. Twins to the right, one to the left. Out of the gun. The snap, the toss right. He'll throw it down the field. Got a man. Touchdown. Halfback pass. And it is Philip Garner connecting with Elijah Howard in a two-possession lead now for the Patriots. You don't see that one very often. You don't, especially – this point of the ball game, if you're going to call it, that's a nice time to do it. First possession of the second half. And now you, you've opened up this lead a little bit. But more importantly, you have, have given your defense the ability to even pin their ears back a little bit more. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is up and good. 17-3 to three is your lead. For the Patriots of the University of the Cumberlands, this is the Faulkner Sports Network. Kickoff coming. Patriots up 17 to 3. That one sent over right side, fielded at the five yard line. Across the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30. 35 40. Works his way up to the midfield. Drexel and Allen with a 45 yard return and a little bit of life for Faulkner. To contextualize, Drexel and Allen, 45 yards on the return. Faulkner, 34 yards as a team. I better say it was offensively. 30 some odd yards here after that last possession where they went backwards. Yeah. So Drexel and Allen with the biggest play of the day for Faulkner so far. Twins to the left, twins to the right. One back in the backfield flanking Ben Anderson. Actually, not Anderson. It's not Anderson. The snap to Caleb Jones. And Caleb Jones, the wide receiver, goes across midfield, a gain of one. Second and nine. Ben Anderson back. Bolton is the running back to his right. There's the snap. Anderson takes off. 
he is tackled around the 40, balls out, but I think they're going to whistle him down. They do. That looked like a design run play where Anderson yeah. never really had a read. Yeah, I think it was a design run as he picks up the first down. They do give him that line to gain. And really that's been the Eagles offense here today is just Anderson scrambling and, and making things happen with his feet. Trips to the left, one to the right. Anderson out of the gun, Drexlin Allen is the back. There's the snap, looks, rolls right. He'll tuck it and take off, and he's drugged down from behind as he gets about two yards on the carry up to the 38-yard line. Make it second and eight. It has been the scrambling of Ben Anderson that has accounted for much of the movement for the for the offense, but it doesn't look like it in the individual stats because of the sacks. Yeah. So he's scrambled for 44 yards. He's netted negative two. Rolls to his left, fires incomplete. So Tyler Wilson double covered over there. 8.31 to go in the third quarter. And that's another play, trying to force that ball in there to Wilson. You're rolling your quarterback out. You're taking away half the field. That was a one-read pass for Anderson. In that situation, you almost just had to let the ball go out of bounds. You don't really try to allow the receiver or anybody else to have an opportunity. You said it. Receivers double covered. Don't even give them an opportunity at the turnover. Two to the right, two to the left, out of the gun, Ben Anderson. Checks with the sideline. Partner having to pick the tempo up now, down two touchdowns. Anderson scrambles, fires, has a man just beyond the sticks and hits him. And that is a first down over to the right side to Demarcus Johnson, the senior wideout from Port Gibson, Mississippi, transferred from Delta State University. That was a nice job by the receiver. He got just past the sticks and just sat down, and, and that's right where he caught it. The throw was low, but Anderson was having to run out of the pocket, so that's understandable. Caleb Jones will take this snap. Jones is a wideout from Collinsville, Alabama, transferred from Jacksonville State. To the left, Jones out of the gun. Bolton and an H-back with him. He'll roll right now. Work up over right guard and get stacked up after about two yards. So make it, they'll give him one, second and nine. Ben Anderson will return to the game. He's getting the play from Quarterback's coach, Cade Young, at the moment. Anderson will work out of the gun. There's the snap. Give to Bolton. He's got nowhere to go. He'll be driven back, and it's a loss. Back to the 30-yard line. Loss of two for John Bolton, and that's going to make it third and about 11. And another one of those situations, as soon as the back has the ball, there's defenders right in his face. Just 19 rushing yards here in the ball game for the Eagles. And, and that's why. You can't get anything going when you've got defenders in your face as soon as you get the ball on the handoff or anything like that. It's, it's just been one of those afternoons here for the Eagles. Trips to the right, one to the left. Ben Anderson out of the gun. Takes a snap, drops. Looks, fires left side, caught, incomplete. no incomplete. Nice effort by Javion Tucker to come back to the football. Couldn't do anything with it. That's going to make it fourth and 12. Honestly, you'd be looking at a 47-yard field goal here. 
you don't have a lot of plays in the playbook for fourth and 12, what do you do? It honestly depends on how comfortable you are with your kicker, and it looks like that's what they're going to do. Uh, if you can put points on the board, you take the points. It will be Ben Anderson on the hold. Caden Davis on the kick, 47-yard attempt forthcoming. It's up, end under end, it'll fall short, and the Cumberlands will take over possession. So 17-3 the lead as the Patriots offense heads back out onto the field. And Faulkner's defense tries to get back to work. And we've seen that ever since the Patriots started using that, that up-tempo offense, started getting that, that tempo and rhythm, it's been a lot more difficult for the Eagles to do anything defensively with them. They've been picking up a few more of those chunk plays where it's seven, eight yards per play. And those, those just, it's almost death by a thousand cuts at that point. Out of the gun, Nixon takes the snap. There's the give. Smith wrapped up but still driving his legs up to the 34-yard line. Second down and six. There's the snap to Nixon, fakes the give, throws it over. Jalen Clemens will hit him right around the sticks, but it should be a first down. It is. They're going to give him the 41-yard line on the reception. So Howard on the catch. Nixon out of the gun. Slings it over the right side, incomplete. Chris Thompson that time coming from that, that NDB spot on the blitz got to Nixon just after he threw the ball, but I think he made him throw it just a little bit quicker than he wanted. The receiver hadn't quite broken open at that point. Ball on the 41. Second and 10. Two to the right, one to the left. Nixon out of the gun. Throws it over right side. That's going to be McKnight making the catch. He'll get up near the sticks to the 50-yard line. That's going to make it third down and, or second down and one, or third and one. Shout out to our Faulkner Sports Network crew, Kay Todd and Antonio Jackson on camera today. Our buddy Garrett Barnes handling the production. There's the snap, the give. He'll run right at the sticks, get stacked up, and they gave it to him. That one surge just enough that he got to the 49, and that's going to be a first down. Depends on which which uh, line judge they go with. One of them about, had him about a half foot short or a half yard short, but they will give it to him. So first down and 10 after the Philip Garner run. Out of the gun goes Nixon. Two receivers. There's the snap. There's the give. Left in. Wrapped up, taken down. Right around the line of scrimmage. They'll say he lost maybe a half yard. Nope, put him right back at the original line. So Garner gets nothing, second and ten.
Twins to the right, one to the left. The snap, drops, looks, finds Parham again. And Parham wrapped up and taken down. That's Josh Taylor on the stop. Up to the 44. So despite nothing on second down or on first down, they get enough on second down to make third yeah. and manageable again. They've stayed ahead of the chains most of the day. Twins to the left, one to the right. Yeah, if you can keep it that third and five, you know, about that range, you're, you've got a whole lot more in your playbook that you can go to for sure. There's the snap, the drop. He looks, he fires, caught. Garner makes his man miss, gets spun down, out of bounds at the 40. So that's going to make it fourth and about one. They say he stayed inbound, so the clock will run. Fourth and one from the 40. And I I agree with the Patriot offense staying out oh, of the absolutely. field. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Now he'll throw the screen to Parham. That's been their best play. And there it is. Jalen Clemens on the tackle, but – it's a first down. Well, when you, you catch those DBs playing off of you in coverage so much, that's an easy, you know, three, four yards that you can hit right there. And, and Nixon does the right thing, checks right into it, hits Parham, and Parham just gets that first down. And now they're they're good to go at the 35-yard line. Yeah, Parham been very effective on that. Nine catches, 73 yards now. Man in motion from the near to the far. Fakes the give, steps up. Trey Wilkins can't get him. Now he's finished off. Tyrese Wells is there. And there's one more underneath the pile. I couldn't tell who that was. Still getting up. Tyrese Wells and Terry Brown. Terry Brown and Tyrese Wells combined for the sack there. That was a great job by Wilkins. He was the first one there and held on as long as he absolutely could to Nixon. That gave them enough time to get there and finish him up for the sack. So second and 18, twins to the left, trips to the right. Nixon drops, looks, fires, complete. And again, as J.R. Lucas is tackled there, you can tell – I'm sorry, that's not J.R. Lucas, that's Elijah Howard. You can tell where they have not, or why they've not thrown any picks this year. Yeah. They, their offense is quick. They don't give a lot of time to get home. They get receivers into space well. And Nixon's very accurate. And we've seen him also being be willing to throw the ball away. That makes it, when you can't turn a team over, it makes it really hard to beat them. It really does, especially in that this atmosphere where you can kind of take advantage of a lot of those opportunities, and that was a quick third quarter. Yep, and we head to the fourth, 17-3, University of the Cumberlands on the Fartner Sports Network. Nixon drops, looks, complete, incomplete. Jarrell Williamson with the big hit on Romeo McKnight, and McKnight will hop off the field. A 
Williamson separates player from ball on that one. It was a good read by Williamson, seeing that the ball was coming out, getting to the receiver and attacking just as the ball gets there. Makes it now fourth and long where the Patriots have to punt. Chris Thompson back at his own five-yard line. Punt is up. In under in. It'll check at the five and roll into the end zone. Had two guys there sitting at waiting for it. It just bounced right in between and rolls right into the end zone. So a good break for the Eagles. They'll get the ball to start at the 20-yard line. 14.47 to play in the ball game. Faulkner. He's got to find something offensively here. On the day, 54 yards. At, at this point, you're looking for anything, any spark of life coming from this offense. Fakes the give. Throws it over, and Tucker can't catch it. Hit him in, yep. in the chest on that one. And that's those things you've got to have. When you're struggling offensively, you've got to make those catches and make those plays and even extend them a little more than even what the route was intended to, to be. Second and ten. Faulkner behind the chains again. Trips left, one right. Anderson out of the gun. Drops, looks, scrambles, works back left, throws downfield. He's got the Tyler Wilson in a big play. So Ben Anderson kept it alive, kept his eyes downfield, and he found the Tyler Wilson, who has been the break glass in case of emergency yeah. receiver for the last two years. That's a great play by Anderson, making making players miss where he should have been down in the backfield a couple of different times, but finds his way up, as you said, keeps his eyes down the field, makes a nice throw in stride for Wilson. And he does a good job bringing it in around the defender. Trips to the right, one to the left. Anderson takes the snap. There's the give. Corinthian Cunningham gets about a yard. Second and nine. I'm surprised they're still going with this slower approach. Down by two scores. Two touchdowns and two extra points. Anderson will run the play in. Four receivers in the formation. There's the snap. He drops. Scrambles to his right. He'll throw over toward Tucker, and he sailed that one, but he didn't throw it where anybody else had a yeah. shot at it either. Smart play, put it out there where the only receiver has an opportunity to get it. Just couldn't get his shoulder squared to, to make that throw accurately. Third down and nine. Clock is running off the incomplete pass, or the play clock, rather. I apologize. That should be happening. <laughs> Trips to the right one to the left. There's the snap. Anderson finds his man in the middle of the field. Going to make something happen. There he touchdown, goes, Sean Vincent. 43-yard touchdown to Sean Vincent, his second score in two weeks. And Faulkner back in the ball game. Cuts it to 17-9. To and again, Ben Anderson keeping the play alive, yep. making something happen. Nice job yet again, keeping your eyes up, not just taking off, but looking downfield, finds his receiver open in the middle of the field, and then the receiver does all the work from there, takes it to the house, and, and makes this a ball game again. The snap, the kick, up and good. 
from Caden Davis, and it's 17-10. And now the Faulkner defense will be tasked with answering the call. This is the Faulkner Sports Network. Caden Davis will kick it away. He'll kick it short. Nice job there by number 35, Jalen Yerby. Didn't expect the ball, but quickly turned around and made the adjustment. Called for the catch and secured it. And again, plus territory for the Cumberlands. I get the idea on kicking it short there, but you got 12.56 to yeah. play. You pin them back deep and you let your defense, which hasn't played floor, right. do work. Now, you, it, was a, it was a gamble. Now ball on the 47-yard line. Let's see if the Faulkner defense can come up with an answer. Thought process on that had to be we catch them by surprise at this point. We might have a better opportunity to actually snag that, that on sides than later in the ball game. Two to the right, one to the left. Working out of the gun. He's got a back to his right. Now the, the tight end moves into place. They'll throw the screen look again. Chris Thompson wraps him up and makes the tackle. That was Elijah Howard on the catch. And we've talked about that play for the for this team several times, but watch their blocking on those plays. The receivers do an excellent job knowing how to get off the ball and make those blocks to allow the receiver to come underneath and give them an opportunity to make a play. And that play only netted a yard, but we see that play a lot of times go backwards. Yeah. Chris Thompson, a good job that time getting off that block. Right. There's the give to Smith. He'll try the middle, and they'll bring him down at the 49. So that, again, a nice surge and leg drive from Smith is going to make it about third and six. So pivotal p point in this fourth quarter. Can Faulkner force a three and out? Out of the gun again goes Nixon. He takes the snap. He'll give to Smith. Wrapped up, taken down, lost a yard, fourth down and seven and it didn't hurt him punting or kicking it short. And that's what you needed for this this defense. Get that three and out. Get the offense back on the field. After you get some points, you've got to think that gives them some confidence, the ability to maybe move this ball down the field against this, this University of Cumberland's defense here on this next drive. Ball on the 50-yard line. Snap coming in. The punt will come from Harlan Brown. He'll kick a low one. It'll check up at the 10. Oh, that would have gone into the end zone, but he fielded it. He's going to return it. 15-20, shakes a tackle up to the 25-yard line. So he ended up making a good decision there as he goes from the 2 to the 25. Yeah, he, he caught that ball saying the same thing you, to, you were. Like, ooh, that was going to go in the end zone. What, why are we doing this? But he makes something out of nothing and gives the Eagles six extra yards they wouldn't have had otherwise. Up, oh, give him to the 26. Yep, you're right. So, ball on the 26 yard line. 10 55 to go in the ball game. 17 10, University of the Cumberlands with the lead. 
Trips to the left, one to the right, Anderson out of the gun. Corinthian Cunningham is the back in the backfield with him. There's the snap, looks. He'll tuck it and take it and get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. And that was that was a situation where Anderson probably dropped his eyes a little bit. He could have had he had uh, Demarcus Johnson make a nice cut coming in, had him open there for a second on a slant route, but at that point he's already evading a, a rusher trying to get up the field. Second and ten, Faulkner behind the chains. Twins to the right, one to the left. He's got a tight end to the right and a back to his right. Anderson takes the snap. Give to Corinthian Cunningham. Left guard works his way up the field to about the 31, 32 yard line. That will make it a more manageable third down here. Third and about five. There's a big gain on second down here. Third and four. Anderson gets the play. He'll run it in with 15 on the play clock. Play clock at 10. They're not set yet. Anderson out of the gun. Three receivers. Timeout from the side. Timeout <laughs> taken by Faulkner. They'll talk about it and we'll let them do it. This is the Faulkner Sports Network. Snap to Anderson, scrambles, shakes the tackler, throws it out to Cunningham, but led him a little too much, and now Faulkner's going to have to punt. Had his man, couldn't float it up enough to let him do anything with it. Yeah, couldn't get his feet up underneath him and set of any kind, so it makes the inerrant throw. Anderson trying to lobby for him to go for it on fourth, but you got to punt it here this yeah. deep in your own end zone with not over nine minutes to play. Caden Davis. Back to punt. Cumberland's has largely played mistake-free football. Faulkner just waiting on one break. I'm going to cross midfield, check up at the 40, and take a roll. And to the 28. So a nice job by Caden Davis to flip the field a little bit. Was good punt. Probably the worst field position that Patriots have started with in quite some time. If you're the Cumberlands, you've got the lead. Obviously, you want drives to end in points, but shortening this game, yeah, you are just as important. You are definitely good milking this clock, running the football, and, and taking the air out of this game here in the end of the fourth quarter. There's the give left side, and he's stuck. Samaj Washington. And also in running the football at this point in the game, you're making the Eagles come up and have to make a play to stop you from getting those first downs. And and still that first down play picks up three yards. If they pick up another three yards, they're they're right in line and, and on their traje trajectory. There's the snap. And they blow it dead. There's a flag. False start. Well, that puts them behind schedule a little bit. Ball on the 
the 26 yard line. Two to the left, one to the right. Nixon. Now they back off and they will run the play clock. Play clock hadn't even started yet. No. Nope. There it goes. Rolls to his left. Looks, fires, got his man incomplete. Had him, he just threw it at his feet. And Elijah Howard couldn't get his shoulders turned back enough to be able to catch the ball. Big break for the Faulkner defense there. It is. You said it. He was wide open making that out route. And Nixon just unable to get enough on it, number one. And then you said it, not able to stop your momentum and go back and catch the ball at your, at your shoestrings. Third down and 12. Trips to the left, one to the right. Nixon checking with the sideline. Play clock's at zero, and they'll take a timeout to avoid the penalty. So Cumberland's with a third and long as they emerge from this timeout in a moment. This is the Partner Sports Network. Ball on the 26-yard line. Third down and 12 for the Patriots. They lead 17-10 here in the fourth quarter. Drops, looks, scrambles out of there now, does Nixon. He'll keep it and be tackled by Samaj Washington at about the 32-yard line, well short of the sticks. We talked about Samaj Washington in the pregame. He had 10 tackles last week has come up big here in the fourth quarter on that drive in particular. And he's going to get the ball back for his team. That was a huge play by Washington. Nixon had all day to throw the football, number one. Then he rolled out and came out. He was the only guy between him and a 20 to 30 yard gain was Washington. And see, he's able to make the stop after about a six yard gain. Just two tackles for Samaj Washington in this game, both of them on that drive. There's the kick, end over end. It'll check up at the 35 and take a roll toward the sideline. We'll see where they put it. They're going to put him at the 31-yard line. So not bad on the field position for Faulkner. Not bad on the time, 7.38 to play. Two timeouts remaining. Ball on the 31. Wilson, Johnson, Tucker, and Vincent are the receivers. Corinthian Cunningham is the back. Ben Anderson takes the snap. He'll pitch it left. Corinthian Cunningham gets maybe a yard. That's what they're going to give him as a yard on the play. <coughs> Second and nine. Anderson out of the gun. Twins right, one left.
He'll take the snap, fake the give. Got his man down the sideline, Javion Tucker with the catch. And he drags the tackler all the way up to the 31 yard line, Javion Tucker. That was great timing on that play call. The cornerbacks came up to play tight, bump and run coverage there off of the line. And then on this, on the side closest to us, we had the fake screen. So that, that defensive back tries to jump on that. And then they go deep on the other side. Great throw and timing. Anderson gives it to, to Tyler Wilson on the jet sweep. Wilson spins forward to about the 28-yard line, a gain of about three. And credit Toby Adewale, the defensive back for Cumberland's, because he grabbed hold of Javion Tucker and wouldn't let go. And he dragged him five or six yards, but he made the tackle, yeah. and that saved the touchdown. Twins to the left, one to the right. Ben Anderson out of the gun. Corinthian Cunningham is the back. Garrett or the tight end to the left. Anderson takes the snap, gives it to Cunningham. Cunningham right guard, runs through, drives his legs forward. He'll have a first down and a little more up to the 18-yard line, and Faulkner's offense starting to feel it a little bit. It's the best run of the, of the afternoon outside the legs of Ben Anderson at any point in this ballgame. Three receivers in the formation, an H-back and a tailback. That is Cunningham, the tailback. He'll go right up the middle, up to the 11-yard line. Again, a good surge on first down for Corinthian Cunningham. Twins to the left, one to the right. Going to get a whistle and a timeout taken, presumably by the Cumberlands, but I haven't seen the White Hat officially signal it. So we'll keep it right here. Cumberland's beginning to feel that momentum shift a little bit as Faulkner maybe found something in the defense. Well, they're finding some things that are working for him right now. That little action on the handoff, a little delay action coming back up and then cutting back inside toward more of the middle of the, the defense. Been working with Cunningham there and, and on a couple of runs, they, they're getting a little bit ahead of the sticks. They've been so much of this ball game, first down's been a yard or two yards. Now they're getting three and four yards on first down, keep, keeping themselves ahead of, of the game here and making the play calling a little bit more accessible to them throughout the course of a possession. There's the snap, fakes the give, throws it up to Marcus Johnson, couldn't stay in bounds. He couldn't stay in bounds. He could not get the foot down. The right foot was in the air, the left foot on the sideline. And a nice job by the defensive back who basically yeah. just boxed him out of the paint, essentially, on that one. Third down and short here. Third and three. A field goal does you nothing. You got to think you're four down territory here with five minutes to play. Only two timeouts left. The snap is to Ben Anderson. Fakes the give. That Finds is. his man. Ben Anderson only needed three downs. Hit Javion Tucker for the 11-yard touchdown, and Faulkner now an extra point away from tying the ball game. And Tucker, that big-bodied receiver that they've really needed, really need to come into his own and step up and be that go-to guy, just like we saw here on the downfield pass and open up so much more in the middle of the field if he can really get going in the rhythm of this offense. Anderson will have the hold. Tucker got to run back out there for the extra point. Was busy celebrating the touchdown. Four seconds to get it off. They will. Davis's kick is up. And good. We are all tied with 4.58 to play here at the Bill.
Jaden Davis to kick it away. Sends it deep, fielded at about the 11-yard line. To the 20, to the 25, breaks it outside, and he'll be taken down right around the 30. Not a bad starting spot for the Patriots. It's not. We'll, we'll see well, what kind of, of energy this de Faulkner defense comes back onto the field with after a couple of two good possessions for them back-to-back -back defensively. They've gotten the Patriots' offense off the field in three and outs on consecutive possessions, so now we'll see if they can continue that effort. Ball will be on the 30 in the middle of the field. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, a tight end to the left. One back in the backfield flanking Nixon. Snap is high, fakes the give, throws it over, finds his man, and Jalen Clemens wraps him up and drives him backwards. Punches the ball out as they blow it dead. Was it incomplete? Was it a catch? Uh, it's a catch, and they're going to give him about five yards on it. Yeah. But so it, second and five. It was a nice job on the read. You said as soon as the ball was there, he was there to make the hit. Out of the gun. Throws it over. Screen look. And a, he stuck. Nice job by Cordell King and Chris Thompson. AP Parham has eaten them alive on that play today. As Parham, nine catches and 73 yards. And on that play, same thing they've done all day. And Cordell King met him at the point of attack. That's a great job by King. And the biggest difference on that play was there were two defensive backs over here, one receiver, couldn't get that extra man, and King just fought through the block and made the play, and Parham almost just tripped over him. Takes the snap, drops third and seven, in trouble. Finds his man, there's Parham, wraps him up, and he did he get there? Did he? Was he out of bounds? They've given him the 40, and that's, that's going to be a first that's down. first down. We got a flag. And now you got some mix-up on the sideline as Parham – Going at a couple of Faulkner players on the sideline, and I'm sure there's been some return fire. But that's a first down for Cumberland's. That was almost disastrous for the Eagles. I saw the umpire reaching, look like, for that flag, and if he throws that flag, you know it's typically going to be on, on that, that sideline. So that would have been an extra 15 yards. Ball on the 40. And a timeout taken by Cumberland's. I believe that, I thought that might be their last, but they may have one left. So timeout taken by University of the Cumberland's. We'll take it with them, Faulkner Sports Network. Twins to the right, one to the left. Two backs flanking. Nixon takes the snap, fakes the give, throws it over, incomplete. Heard the footsteps coming a little bit there on Jalen Clemens. It was there, just threw it behind the receiver to Elijah Howard, did Nixon. Now second down for the Patriot offense. 2.57 to play in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. Three receivers in the formation. The snap to Nixon gives it to Smith. Juggled the handoff a little bit, but now he gets his legs working forward. Ball's out. Ball's out. Faulkner's got it at the 50-yard line. Jarrell Williamson walks away with it. 
Oh, now they're coming together. White hat signal. Faulkner football with 2.47 to go at midfield. Jarrell Williamson came away with it. I don't know who made the hit to pop it loose. Marvin Payton and Jarrell Williamson were both in the area. And the forced fumble was something that at least I brought up before and as we started this game, six of those for the Patriot defense, but yet it's the Eagles here right now in a crucial spot of the game, picking up that forced fumble and getting the offense back on the field in good field position right at midfield. This is the fourth lost, pump, uh, lo fourth lost fumble of the season for the Patriots. Ben Anderson takes the snap. There's the give. Nice response by the defense. That kind of a, of a quick turn, a lot of times that, that first yeah. play is the hardest one. Not expecting to have to run back out on the field, so you got to get – get out there quick, get prepared, and a lot of times you can give up that gashing run or something like that on that first play, but there they come in focused and make a good play. Loss of three on the play for the Eagles. Trips to the left, one to the right. Ben Anderson out of the gun, takes the snap, drops, looks. He will take off. Anderson first down yardage. Ben Anderson up to the 38-yard line, 2.09 to play. Clock will stop while they move the chains. Heavy set coming in. Yeah, I was about to say, at this point, you're in the driver's seat. There's no need to, to rush anything or, or, or force anything at this point of the ball game. You're in the driver's seat. If you can get down to that field goal range, you feel good. Dawson Mosley and Garrett Orr, part of that heavy package in the game. Corinthian Cunningham spun around and taken down maybe a yard, if that. Great job defensively. Ken Kendall Adams Young, the 5'11, 295 pound defensive lineman out of Mobile, makes that play. Ball carrier got to him, and he said, Nope, no more. You are down now. Second down and 10. No gain there. That's going to get it to 122 in counting. You still need some yardage here. You're not in field goal range yet. You need a good 10 yards out of this to feel pretty comfortable about that field goal attempt. The give to Corinthian Cunningham, and again, nothing. 105 and counting. You, you're fine with putting the game on the foot of Caden Davis, but you got to get him in field goal range. Right now, you're at a 55-yard attempt. You're not in range. Missed, Third and 10 here. Missed earlier in this game from about 45. I think here you're just looking to get something. Yeah, you got to just get, get five yards, if anything. Two timeouts for the Eagles. Clock down to 37 seconds. Four receivers in the formation. Ben Anderson takes the snap. He drops. He rolls. He sets. He's going to get. No, he gets away, but now Man. nowhere to go, and he's thrown down. And he's sacked. The one thing you couldn't do taking a sack is what ends up happening. 22 seconds now in the ball game. At least regulation. So fourth down and 14 or so when we come back from this timeout with 22 seconds left in a tie ball game in the fourth quarter. Ball on the 42-yard line. Fourth down and 14 in a tie game. And if you're Cumberland's, 
you're just fine giving up 13 yards. Absolutely. That's why you got three deep safeties. Anderson takes the snap. Anderson throws it. Anderson finds his man, so Tyler Wilson can't catch it. Incomplete. Would have had a first down if he'd been able to hang on. He was hit by the safety. Now with 15.1 seconds left, if you're the Patriots, you can run one play to try to get in field goal range. You've got a timeout in your pocket. Yeah, and that's the thing right now for them. If they had that extra timeout, you could probably get two plays out of this and look for a field goal. But but as it stands, you like you said, you've really got that one shot, get down, call the call a timeout and get your kicker on the field. And you're taking over at the 42-yard line. Theoretically, that's all in play. Trips to the left, one to the right. Out of the gun goes Nixon from the 42. Looks, fires, complete to AP Parham, tackled inbounds. That's got to be your timeout there. Got to the 46. Now, if you're going to get into field goal range, you got to run something to the boundary. Trey Wilkins checking in. And there's the timeout call. Samaj Washington shaking up, coming off the field. Again, 8.8 .8 left. The only option is to run something to the yeah. boundary here. Outright on this, this left hash, so it's going to have to be to that side of the field, out route, and it's going to have to be a, a good nearly 20 yards to get into decent field goal range. Ball is on the 46-yard line. If you're Faulkner, you're pushing everything toward the middle of the field. Out of the gun goes Nixon. Takes the snap. Rolls right. Looks, throws, pushed out of bounds. They're going to call it a catch. Incomplete. Incomplete. 1.8 left. Now the only shot, shot is to throw it to the end zone. And that was exactly the yardage that they needed to get them in some kind of field goal shot there with, with that last play. Credit the DB coming over, just making the push, allowing the momentum of the receiver to carry him on out of bounds. From the 46-yard line, it's third down. That doesn't matter with 1.8 left. It's going to be a shot play to the end zone or one of the wildest trick plays yeah. you could come up with. The annexation of Puerto Rico. The annexation I'm calling of it. Puerto Rico. Out of the gun. Nixon drops. Nixon rolls. Nixon looks. Nixon fires, batted around incomplete, and we're going to overtime here at the Bill.
So Cumberland's will have the ball to begin the overtime. Ball on the 25-yard line. Nixon out of the gun. Garner goes from the backfield all the way out to the right. There's the snap, the fake, throws it to Garner. Jalen Clemens breaks it up, incomplete. Good job by Clemens breaking on that ball, getting to uh, Garner right as his ball is getting to him, knocks it out of his hands. Ball back to the 25-yard line here, second down and 10. Nixon out of the gun with three receivers to his right. Now that man will come in motion behind him, he'll give to Garner. He'll try the middle, get up to the 20, make it third and five. So again, five yards on that run, and they'll stay on schedule as they have done most of the day. Third and five. Big thing about that play is even if you don't gain another inch, you just yeah. went to a 37-yard field goal, which is a much more manageable kick. Five receivers in the formation. Nixon takes the snap, looks, pressure, rolls. He'll keep it, and he'll step out of bounds. Didn't get the first down, but picked up those three extra yards, three to four extra yards. To the 16, and now you got to think they're bringing the kicker on. You're not going for it on fourth and one here. No, you sure certainly wouldn't at this point of overtime. You at least make Faulkner have to put points on the board of some kind. But you also have to watch the snap here. Don't jump. It's a 33-yard attempt coming from Joe Matosian. He had a 47-yarder going into halftime. The snap, the kick, the hold, or the, the hold and the kick, and that's good. So 20-17, to 17, Cumberland's with the lead. Now Faulkner knows what they have to do to answer. You don't quite have the field goal in your pocket at the 25. You're not far away. It, and there's the balance of trying to play for the win and yeah. not turning over right the the next overtime not not giving it away this point you're just coming out here trying to run your offense and, and if you can get that first down obviously that's what you're looking for but if you can pick up five yards give yourself a little better shot at that field goal ben anderson out of the gun three receivers so tyler wilson in motion the give nope he keeps it and anderson gets a yard to the 24 yard line Great job defensively there by the Patriots, number 37, Adam Cottle. Again, we're mentioning him, leading tackler, if I can spit that out of my mouth, Yeah. for this Patriot defense. Does it again right there. Big play for him on first down. Second and nine. Three receivers right, one left. Anderson out of the gun again. There's the snap. Anderson looks. There's He's going to keep it. He'll roll right. He'll tuck it. First down run for Ben Anderson. Great job by Anderson making the defender commit and do something, and that's when he really turned the ball upfield. He was going to settle for that five-yard gain, but as soon as that defender committed, he turned it upfield and got the first down and gave this Eagle offense life here in overtime. Ball to the 13-yard line. Now you really – have the field goal in your pocket here. But you also have got to run your offense. Out of the gun. I don't know that you put it in the air at all. Anderson, the give to Cunningham, cut down at the line of scrimmage. The way they're running the ball, too, they're getting a lot of crash action on, that, on the run game. You might have an opportunity at a play-action pass here 
Yeah, it's got, but it it's got to be there. It's got to be your guy or yeah. nobody, right? Yeah. At the, really, at this point, it's got to be one on one, and there's only one place to put the ball. Right. I would want more slant routes if if I'm looking to pass the ball and, than anything else toward the middle of that field. Anderson takes the snap, fakes the give. He's got the throw. Touchdown! Faulkner wins it. Jamie on Tucker from Ben Anderson, 13-yard touchdown, and Faulkner gets up off the deck down 14 in the fourth quarter to win it in overtime. The Eagles steal one from the Cumberlands. What a win. Great win for this team. You said it, coming back from 14 down to be able to do that makes a, a huge impact on this team moving forward. How about the play from Anderson? Yeah. Just a great job keeping his eyes upfield, holding the ball long enough to draw the defense in. And you Tucker's said it. You wide said, open. You said play action. They're crashing. You might have a shot. They got the shot, and it was there. And Javion Tucker made the catch and secured it. Two touchdowns for him and, in the fourth quarter in overtime. And in that situation, that's the guy you have to be able to go to. It's Javion Tucker. 6'3", you know, about 200 pounds. Uh, he, he's the guy who's got the ability to make those kind of plays for you. And he absolutely got it done on that one. Faulkner down 17-3 to in the fourth quarter, came back to win the game 23-20 to in overtime. An incredible game that we ended up with here at the Bill your final numbers as you look through this this team, again, the, the one that matters is on the scoreboard. They ended up getting to 229 yards of total offense versus 270 for Cumberlands. We talked about a mistake. They were waiting for Cumberlands to make a mistake. It happened, the yep. fumble there that stopped a drive. They didn't end up cashing in points off of it, but it stopped a fourth quarter drive but that was already at midfield for the Cumberlands and was very important in this game. And what that did, it really, like you said, didn't get them points off of that turnover, but it really set up the field position for them to be able to come back later because it mattered because then they were playing with the short field after that turnover for the rest of the ball game. So for Faulkner, 8 of 18 for 162 yards and two touchdowns for Ben Anderson. Javion Tucker ends up with a couple of – a couple of touchdowns in this effort, a big one for him. Uh, just all the way around, you got to credit this team. So, in particular, that defense, Jarrell Williamson, nine tackles, Mervyn Payton, seven tackles. We called their names a lot today. Just a, a really impressive effort from the defense. They got home a couple of times, which is something they've struggled with in recent years. Big win. Uh, it, it was looking like a one in three season yeah, to and, start, and all of a sudden. And this win, who knows what it propels them to throughout the, the rest of the year, especially in conference. This is a, a big thing, big win for them to get it off the deck, like you said, come back, win this ball game in this fashion, win for really three quarters you have no response offensively Absolutely. to what's coming at you. So a, ma a major comeback from victory for Faulkner here today over Cumberlands, pulls it to two and two. Partner, they go on the road next week, so you and I, uh, the people will not have to listen to us. <laughs> Aren't they lucky? I know. They will not have to listen to us next week because Faulkner hits the road to Campbellsville next week. Back home October the 8th against Thomas Moore. That'll be Law Enforcement Appreciation Day. We'll also honor our Hall of Fame inductees uh, on that Saturday. So that is Saturday, October the 8th. As we turn now to the next chapter for this team, that's the kind of performance, like you said, it, it could really turn a page for them. It really can, especially once they start seeing some of the, the film from this game of how the fourth quarter things, while the, the run game still wasn't there on first down where, they, where they're getting big yardage, 
they're still able to come up and, and find their way to get those first downs when they need them and do a lot of the little things. They cleaned up a lot of those things there on those last few drives within the fourth quarter to tie this ball game up, and they're in overtime, eventually get the W coming out of the bill to here this afternoon. So your final here today, 23-20 in overtime. Faulkner comes away with the win. For David Turner, I'm Jeremy Smith. This has been the Falk. Oh, and for Garrett Barnes. Let's not forget our, our crew. <laughs> for Garrett Barnes and Cade Todd and Antonio Jackson. For Joel Sellers, Grayson Plunkett, and Trinity Thomas. He's David Turner. I'm Jeremy Smith. Run it back one more time. This has been the Faulkner Sports Network presentation of Faulkner Eagle Football.